Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is John Robinson with our Denver office, the NC National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Uh, during the call tonight, if you'd like to ask a question, please press zero on your telephone. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to NCBA President Jennifer Houston for a few introductory comments. Good evening. Thank you to everyone who has joined us tonight on the phone and on the web. Recently, USDA APHIS announced their decision to postpone implementation of the electronic identification requirements posted by the agency in April 2019. This recent federal action led to confusion in the cattle industry regarding cattle ID. This evening, NCBA's Associate Director of Animal Health Policy, Dr. Jessica Watson, will provide a brief overview of the current federal requirements for cattle identification, followed by your questions. Dr. Watson? Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you to everyone who has joined us this evening on the phone and on the web. As Jennifer just mentioned, there has been some confusion on the current federal requirements for cattle identification. Tonight, we hope to clarify the current expectations of producers regarding official ID for their cattle. First, we will go over USDA animal disease traceability activities over the past few years and review the current federal rule for official animal identification. Next, we will review the types of cattle required to have official identification and what forms of official identification can be used. We will also review the different types of official ear tags recognized by USDA and review exemptions to the current rule for officially identifying cattle. On September 25, 2018, the Undersecretary of Agriculture for Marketing and Regulatory Programs, Greg Ibaugh, announced the four goals for advancing animal disease traceability. Tonight, we will be focusing on just one of those goals, which is to use electronic ID tags for animals requiring a individual identification in order to make the transmission of data more efficient. This led to USDA posting a proposed timeline to achieve electronic identification on their website in April 2019. This guidance would have required all types of cattle listed in the current federal rule to use electronic radio frequency identification tags, also known as RFID tags. And this would be the case if an ear tag was used as the official form of identification for interstate movement by January 2023. But on October 9th, 2019, President Trump signed executive orders 13891 and 13892, which were aimed at upholding the Administrative Procedure Act. The Administrative Procedure Act declares administrative policies affecting individual rights and obligations are to be made widely known to avoid makeshift biased policies. The executive orders address agency guidance documents, such as the proposed timeline for implementing electronic ID for cattle. And the executive orders mention agencies must provide public notice and the opportunity for public petition of guidances. In addition, the executive orders stated that agencies may clarify existing obligations of federal rules through non-binding guidance documents, which are exempt from the notice and comment requirements. And they state guidance documents cannot threaten enforcement action. As a result of these executive orders, USDA decided to remove the guidance on the transition to electronic identification from their website. Then, on October 25, 2019, USDA posted the APHIS Statement on Animal Disease Traceability. This addresses the agency's reasons for removing and reviewing the guidance and states that while USDA has paused the implementation of electronic RFID tags, they remain committed to the four goals for advancing animal disease traceability. In addition, this document notes any future changes to electronic ID will only apply to cattle 
that are required to be identified for interstate movement by the current animal disease traceability rule. This posting and removal of guidance by USDA has been confusing, so I'm now going to review what is currently expected of cattle producers for the purposes of official identification for interstate movement of their cattle. The current federal animal disease traceability rule is in Section 9 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 86, and was published on January 9, 2013. This rule only applies to cattle that are moving interstate, meaning from one state to or through another state. This rule does not apply to cattle who are moving within one state. In addition to only affecting cattle traveling out of their current state of residency, this rule only applies to all sexually intact cattle 18 months of age or older, all female dairy cattle, all male dairy cattle born after March 11, 2013, and cattle of any age used for rodeo, shows, exhibition, and recreational events. It is important to note the current federal rule does not apply to feeder cattle. And as I mentioned previously, USDA has stated future changes regarding electronic ID will only apply to cattle that are required to be identified for interstate movement by the current 2013 animal disease traceability rule. Now we will review the forms of official identification that can be used when moving these types of cattle interstate or between states. First, you can use an official ear tag with a printed US shield. These can be visual only tags, metal or plastic, or electronic RFID tags. I will go over more specific examples of official ear tags a little later. You can also use a group or lot identification number if the group of cattle are managed entirely together until slaughter. Brands are also considered an official form of identification, but only if both the shipping and receiving state animal health officials agree to brands as an official form of ID. Also, the brand must be registered with a recognized brand inspection authority and a brand certificate must go with the animal during its interstate movement. It is important to note that very few states allow this and they do not always have agreements with the same states. Most of the states that allow brands as a form of official identification are in the West. I recommend reaching out to your State Department of Agriculture for specific information on your state's policies. Lastly, tattoos for breed registration can be used as an official form of identification, but only if the shipping and receiving state animal health officials agree that these tattoos are official forms of ID. Tattooed animals must have a breed registration certificate go with them during their interstate movement. Similar to the brands, few states have such agreements, and I recommend reaching out to your State Department of Agriculture for specific information on your state's policies. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of different ear tags that can be used for official identification. So I will now review the types of official ear tags. First, there are the metal noose tags, also known as silver tags or bright tags. There are also orange metal bangs tags that are con considered official ID. Then there are the 840 tags, which are visual only. 840 is the country code assigned to the United States by the International Committee on Animal Recording. There are also 840 tags that are electronic RFID tags. Electronic orange bangs tags are also available, but
but if you already use a type of electronic ID that is not orange for your operation, your veterinarian can put the tag number into the records. You can also use the 900 series tags as an official ID, but only if the tag was applied to the animal before March 11, 2015. Also, 900 series tags do not require a U.S. shield symbol to be printed on them. USA prefix tags have the letters USA printed above or before the individual animal ID number on the tag, and therefore do not require a U.S. shield symbol to be printed on them. The USA prefix tags can be used as official identification, but these tags must have been applied before March 11, 2015. Lastly, location-based tags can be used as official identification. These tags do require the U.S. shield symbol to be printed on them, as well as having either a premises identification number or a location identification number with a unique number for within the herd. Earlier, I had mentioned that some cattle are exempt from having official identification for interstate movement. I will now review these exemptions. The first type of exemption is for cattle going direct to slaughter. In these cases, USDA approved back tags can be used instead of an ear tag. Back tags can also be used if the animal is going to an approved livestock facility and then directly to slaughter. Another exemption is that cattle can move across state lines directly to an approved tagging site prior to being officially identified or tagged. And most livestock markets are approved tagging sites. The final exemption from official ID is for commuter herds or herds with pasture-to-pasture -pasture permits. In these instances, cattle do not need to be officially identified, but there can be no change in ownership, and the animals must move directly between the two premises, no detours. Also, the cattle must travel with a copy of a written agreement between the owner and the shipping and receiving state animal health officials. So to recap, USDA has paused the implementation of electronic ID, and NCBA remains engaged with USDA on enhancing animal disease traceability in the United States. The current federal rule for animal disease traceability passed in 2013 and it remains unchanged. Cattle only need to be identified if they are moving interstate or through or to another state. Only sexually intact cattle 18 months of age and over, all female dairy cattle, male dairy cattle born after March 11, 2013, and show cattle of any age need to be officially identified but there are some exceptions, such as the pasture-to-pasture -pasture permits and cattle going direct to slaughter. There are multiple ways to officially identify your cattle, one of which is ear tags, and there are several types of visual and electronic ID tags that can be used. For additional information on this topic and specific official ID tags, I would recommend visiting USDA's webpage on animal disease traceability. There, you will also find information on traceability program resources, interstate movement guides, a state veterinarian directory, and information on locating an accredited veterinarian. For those of you on the web, I have also listed some additional resources on the executive orders. Thank you to everyone who has joined us on the phone and on the web this evening. We will now open up the call for questions. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question, please press zero on your phone. 
And as a reminder, this information will also be available along with the full broadcast of this webcast tonight on ncba.org tomorrow. We have our first question from the web. It is from Tony from Colorado. And his message is, and question, is what is the definition of dairy cattle? And do cross, dairy cross animals require this? That's an excellent question, Tony. And according to the current federal rule, it just lists dairy cattle, stating all cattle, regardless of age or sex or current use, that are of breeds used to produce milk or other dairy products for human consumption, including but not limited to Holstein, Jersey, Guernsey, milking shorthorn, and red and white. It does not specifically address crossbreed cattle, so I will follow up with our contacts at USDA and, um, and provide an answer um, for our members on this. Our next question is from Bill in Kansas. I, I have Bill's question written down as, do you know the status of mandatory ID in the ADT rule? So, Bill, my, my understanding of, of the current ADT rule is that it's only for those cattle that I listed this evening, the cattle that are 18, sexually intact cattle that are 18 months of age and older, um, all female dairy cattle, all male dairy cattle that were born after March 11th, 2015, and, any, and cattle of any age that are going to shows, rodeos, or exhibitions. Um, in terms of any future rules, we currently do not have any information on that, um, but we, again, USDA had told us that they anticipate any changes with electronic ID um, would only apply to those cattle that I listed this evening that are in the current 2013 rule. Um, and again, these cattle only need to be identified if they're moving outside of the state that they currently reside in. So if your cattle are born and raised and slaughtered within the same state they do not need to be officially identified according to this current federal rule. We have another question from the web, um, Debbie from Kansas, and her question is, what will the revised timeline be for the EID tag adoption? Do you foresee it being implemented in the next year? That's an excellent question, Debbie. Currently, we do not have an updated timeline from USDA um, as to when they will be implementing or, or re-implementing um, this electronic ID tag timeline. Um, but as soon as we find out that information, which we hope will be in the next couple months at the latest, we will definitely be sharing that with our members as an affiliate update. As a reminder, if you have questions this evening, you're welcome to quest, press zero and pose your question. We have time for one or two more questions before we reach the end of the call. Todd from Wisconsin, you're on the line. Hi, I was recently told from USDA APHIS that if a packer buys cattle in an auction market, and specifically dairy cat, dairy steers, uh, leaving one state and then to go to slaughter in another state, they need to be individually ID'd with a back tag. Is that correct information? Todd, thanks so much for your question. Um, on on my and, and my interpretation of of the current federal rule is is that as accurate as those steers would fall under all male dairy cattle born after March 11th, 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, we have time for one more question. We have we have John from Oregon. John, go ahead. The 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 uh, flyer from APHIS in April said that black tags and and um, orange bangs tags would be uh, discontinued in the next. So, available and used, or that's still in effect. That's an excellent question, John. Um, as of right now, the metal tags um, and, and the back tags and bright tags are, are still available for use. We have not heard any official word from USDA that they will be 
um, discontinuing the production of those. That, that was something that was originally planned in that timeline that they released in April 2019. But again, they, they had pulled that down based on the executive orders because there was no opportunity for us to comment on those or petition that guideline. Um, we have, in our conversations with USDA, we have expressed to them concerns about folks being able to officially identify their cattle during any sort of transition, um, and we want to make sure that we have um, tags available to producers. So at this time, they should still be available. We have not heard of any limitations to their supply. Um, I would anticipate that could happen in the future, but um, when we hear any changes, we will be sure to notify all of our members um, through an affiliate update. But currently, those tags are still considered official ID, and they should still be available through the current channels that you have received those metal tags and the bright tags. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening. If you have additional questions that haven't been answered, you're welcome to use the uh, voicemail at the end of the call and leave a message which we can respond to uh, directly. Uh, those of you on the web can also leave a comment. And as a reminder, the full conference audio will be posted to ncba.org tomorrow. Thank you for joining us and have a good evening. <laughs>